today I promise to share some assertiveness training. Shut up money, assertiveness training. And I thought I'd share this a little bit. Why, why introverts hate talking on the phone? Because this really kind of got me started thinking about assertiveness training. Why introverts hate talking on the phone? As I said, a ringing phone is incredibly intrusive. Like an alarm clock or a crying baby, it demands attention right now. When someone calls, we have to switch gears quickly, wrenching our focus away from whatever we were doing. And when you're deep in thought, like most introverts, spend their days. That's really irritating. Furthermore, we don't have time to mentally prepare for the conversation, which for introverts can be like pulling teeth. How many people in this room relate to that? Me! Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, a lot of us relate to that, and it got me really thinking. There needs to be something more we can do to help improve our introverts' chances. Okay? Our introverts' chances at success. Okay? And very important. And I, I feel like I'm a bit of an introvert and I've shared a little bit of my story. I've worked very hard in this business to get where I'm at. And that means I've had to come out of a few shells, if you know what I mean. Like the turtle hides in his shell. I've had to come out of a few shells, it seems. So uh, definitely uh, want to start talking a little bit more in depth today about this whole assertiveness idea. And how that kind of uh, relates to being an introvert or an extrovert and maybe define a few define. things. And maybe by the end of today, I'll have somehow made you think differently about your life and your situation. That's my goal. And I'm not directly going to talk about real estate today so much as I'm going to talk about you. Because the real estate business is the business that we're in. But what's more important than the real estate that is the business that we're in is you, the business owner. You are the entrepreneur. In many cases, most of you are solopreneurs. So you're out there carrying the full responsibility of the entire adventure on your shoulders. So you and your health and your paradigm, how you see the world, how you see your business, how you see calling leads, interacting with leads becomes of most paramount importance. Okay, so let's start by defining a few things here. First of all, Let's define what is an introvert. Someone help me out and give me just an off the cuff definition of an introvert. Someone that's not outgoing, kind of uh, keeps to himself, not real talkative, rather listen to speak. Um, that's I my think point. of them. Uh, I think of introverts as more of observers more than talkers or even listeners better than talkers. Yeah, that's a great answer, both Coach Ed and Christina. I was, I was thinking, isn't it really all of the people who did not want to give an answer to that question? <laughs> yep. Right. When I said, hey, <laughs> when I said, hey, you know what? Somebody give me the off the cuff definition of introvert. There was like a certain percentage of the room who was like, oh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to let somebody else step up and do that. That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. That might be a great example of an introvert. Um, I think we all agree. Um, they gave us the best definitions that we that we kind of know out here uh, without doing any like Webster dictionary diving. So, but if we were to look it up and kind of study it a little bit, being an introvert is kind of about how you recharge. Now, does anybody have, have any guests that they want to share about what I mean about when I say it's kind of about how you recharge? What do I mean? 
This isn't going on YouTube, everybody. Um, there's only a certain limit of capacity of yourself that you can give to others before you're, you feel completely drained and you, your own personal space. That's a great answer. Super good answer. Exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. We have to, we all have to recharge, right? Like we kind of all need that time where we kind of get juiced back up in our own way. And, you know, yours is different than mine. And I do different things when I'm recharging than you do. But, but we kind of have two or three categories here. One is one category is an introvert. And that's, that's someone that recharges best by being alone or in one's own head. Does that make sense? Recharges best by being alone. Does anyone in here say, would they, would they speak up and admit, hey, you know, I truly am by that definition an introvert. I recharge best by being alone and often just by being able to be alone with my own thoughts in my own head. Me. Yes, yes most definitely. Yeah. Okay. 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 Great. All right. So I hear you, Sandra. <laughs> what did you say, Sandra? He says she's an introvert. Nope. That's, that's bullshit. <laughs> well, let's take a look at what an extrovert is then. What um, it's all if it's about if it, being an introvert is about recharging, then what, this is also about recharging. What's what's an extrovert recharge like? Overbearing, talk a lot. Um, oh, wait a interacting minute now. with everybody, blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, a little bit of that is 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 by just being with people, right? They were communicators talking out their thoughts, right? Right. <laughs> They're great communicators. Yeah. Now, I think I have figured out what I am, and that is an omnivore that, that does exist. Yeah. I can get charged up either way. It depends. But mostly I fall. I, I'm like 80-20, I think. 80% introvert, 20% extrovert, which would I would say that categorizes me as an omnivore, right? Omnivore meaning I... I'm both, right? So you have carnivores that eat meat. You have herbivores that eat lettuce. And you have omnivores that eat steak salads. <laughs> I'm an omnivore. <laughs> okay. So anybody got any comments about that? Yeah, I feel like I'm like that too, Justin. I'm an omnivore. Uh, most of the time... Like you said, I probably spend the majority of time by myself, but I've also learned that that can be bad as well. So I try to um, work on the more extrovertness of, of myself because I do get a recharge um, from the energies of other positive people. Yeah. Just like the reason why I'm in this, um, you know, on this team with you guys, because it helps me um, personally recharge. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it possible, I, I, I totally relate, um, is it possible to be a shy extrovert? Heck yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, well, well, that would be somebody that comes alive around people, but only people they know. Or they like. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or that they that, like. That's yeah. the key. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, introverts really only want to talk to people when they're ready to talk. Is there anybody in the room like that? Yeah. I'm not I'm not like that. It's more of a I don't like BS talk. You know, all that fluff. It, 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 and I can sense it, so I'll just shut up. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like anybody yeah. bullshitting. So if you're talking about something like real estate or some of like that that I'm interested in, yes we can talk but if you start talking about 
wife, kids, which I don't have neither and all that. How's the benefits at your job and all that stuff? It, I'm like, I'll just shut up. Yeah, I totally agree. Anybody else in the room relate? I feel like that's yeah, yeah. I feel like if it, if it's not pertaining to me, or if I, if I have no interest in it, or yeah. you know that filler type of talk, you know, where eh, we get to the point if you want. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think what happens is is we start out as introverts, and hopefully we learn and we grow and we develop ourselves into being an omnivert. I think that's how the path that I took was. I think I started out as an introvert. I was forced to be in some uncomfortable scenarios repeatedly until I was just like, okay, I'm a little bit stronger. I've got thicker skin. I've, I'm willing to put myself out there. I went to a couple therapy sessions maybe. Okay, I, I eventually was able to kind of become a 80-20. Now I'm 80% introvert, 20% extrovert which makes me an omnivert so i'll eat steak and salad now those ideas if i were to be honest while there's a lot of study on them and there's a lot of people that pontificate on that topic just like you and i did for the last 15 20 minutes and thank you for everybody chiming in well while we really kind of all relate to those ideas, none of those ideas are rules. They don't necessarily apply. <laughs> okay, and if they do apply, they apply to you differently than they apply to me. Does that make sense? How this is expressed in our world, really a lot comes out like this. It comes out as aggressiveness, assertiveness or passiveness would you guys agree this is how a lot of this introvert extrovert omnivert a lot of our paradigm a lot of our perceptions are expressed through one of these type channels here and everyone else's is too towards us so Let's talk about aggressiveness and assertiveness and passiveness. Someone give me a definition for what's aggressiveness. Anybody, just an off the cuff definition. Doesn't have to be anything. Just, just um, whatever. maybe right, right to the point. I think that's, uh, I would say forceful is, is aggression. Pushy. Pushy. Right to the point. I, I want to use the word aggressive and is defining aggressive. You know, like what to be aggressive just means to be aggressive. You know, like you know what I mean. Like, like you know, maybe a little manipulative, maybe to force your ideas your way onto someone else, or to have someone else force theirs on you. Maybe we would consider that aggressive. Okay. What would what would assertive be? This is shut up money assertiveness training. Let's talk about assertiveness. <clears throat> what is assertiveness? If it's not aggressiveness, what's how is it different than assertiveness? Uh, assertiveness is more not backing down on your end, but not forcing the other person to see your views. Okay, we're definitely going to dive more into what assertiveness means today. We're going to take a quiz here in a minute. But it's definitely not being aggressive. But it is definitely standing up for yourself, right? Is that kind of what you mean, Christina? Yeah. You're standing up for yourself. What about passiveness? Somebody give me a good off-the-cuff definition of passiveness. Pushover. Okay. Okay. Pushover, huh? 
What's that mean? Because my wife calls me that all the time. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um someone who won't speak what they want to say and just let the other person dictate the whole entire conversation. It's a good definition. Someone else give me give me your definition. What's what's being a pushover or a passive individual? What's that mean? Nobody knows? Yeah, you need to um someone who is just always um going with the flow. They don't really stand up for, on their ground or what they're doing or what they want. You know. All right, let's play a game real quick. Let's play a game. That was a great answer. Let's play a game real quick. Right? Are you guys ready? Drum roll, please. Here's the game. All right, we're gonna name. I want you to name someone from a Hollywood movie that you've seen that maybe we would all recognize this person that is an aggressive this person was an aggressive character give me an aggressive character role in some movie somebody just tell me can you think of one that fits that aggressive character just perfectly an actor or well the, well, the role the role in the movie jordan belfort <clears throat> aggressive okay aggressive jordan belfort okay anyone else a role in a movie a character in a movie. Denzel off a of, uh, training day. Denzel off a of training day was pretty pretty rough. Yeah, <laughs> pretty rough. Anybody else uh, um, who could really, really maybe even up it and be like, yeah, this person was really aggressive. Okay. I think about the Joker. The Joker from Batman. Okay. All right, so let's think about what is a passive individual, okay? Passive. What's a push passive over. character? Say it again. A pushover. A pushover. Or, or a, people ple a people pleaser. Okay, a people pleaser, a pushover. Now, let's get a, a, a Hollywood movie example. Uh, In, anyone with an example from a movie, a, cl a classic role that just pops into mind. Oh, this guy was totally, his whole role was to be a loser. <laughs> hmm. uh, <laughs> he got walked on all the time. What about the movie Office Space and the guy that lost his stapler? Is that the movie Office Space where the guy got he lost the stapler? He got put in the office. His office got moved down to the basement. Remember that? Like that guy was pretty much walked on all the time. Yeah. How about the the movie The Cooler? The Cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, yeah. Is there his, it, yeah. His part is uh, <laughs> he, he uh, works at a, a casino and he goes to, when a table's hot. They send this guy over there and it just kind of like kills it. <laughs> Great movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up. Okay, so we kind of have an idea of what an aggressive character is. And then we kind of have an idea of what a passive character is now in our minds. So what is an assertive character? Someone that's kind of maybe middle of the road. We're going to talk about that, but we're, well, let's take a quiz first, okay? Is everybody ready for this quiz? All right, you guys have all got your cameras off like I'm boring you to death. Okay, the um, the quiz is 10 questions. All right, so if you have more than three, if you have three of these questions that indicate to you that you've got some if you feel like when I ask you this question and you answer it, if three out of the 10, you're like, ooh, no, I don't do that. Okay, then you may really need to beef up your assertiveness. You may be in this passive category a little too much. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> All right, thanks for hanging out with me today. Appreciate it. Let's have fun. All right, question number one. When you speak with other people, is it very common for you to maintain eye contact? Yes or no? You might write this down. You've got a pen or pencil, write it down. Eye contact. 
Yes or no? You have a hard time making eye contact, keeping eye contact? What about with strangers? With strangers? Eye contact with strangers? What about the lady at the cashier stand? Do you look at her in her eye? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. What about the lady at the at the drive through? Do you try to make eye contact with her as she takes your credit card or do you just hand the credit card? Okay. Yes or no? Yes or no? You be the judge of you. Okay. Question number two. Let's move on. Do people often ask you to speak up or repeat yourself? Do people often ask you to speak up or repeat yourself? That's pretty clear. Okay. Do you mumble a lot? Do you do what one of my stepkids does and he starts a sentence out strong like this and then by the time he gets to the end of the sentence, he's really fading out and then by the time he really wraps up his thoughts, you don't even really know what he's saying. I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> does anybody know uh, somebody that does that? They 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 trail off. They they do they do what we like. Do you remember like old cassette tapes? I don't know. Maybe songs still do it nowadays, where they fade out. Like <clears throat> like the band is still playing. There's a guitar solo going on, but the song just keeps getting softer and softer and softer until you can't hear it no more. I'm, what? Okay. Question number two, how do you sound? Quiet, mumble, do people ask you, do you speak up? Okay, number three, do you say, uh, um, uh, a lot? Okay, I do. This is one I'm guilty of. I'll just be honest with you. Okay. Do you say, uh, um, a lot? That was number three. Number four. Without changing your physical position right now, what is your posture like? Is it really, really shitty or is it confident and strong? And you're kind of like, well, we've been here for 40 minutes, so I'm kind of slouchy. Okay. Is your posture good? Is it not good? All right. Number five, do you feel comfortable asking questions when you need clarification? Yes or no? Number six, do you feel comfortable being around other people, strangers? Number seven, can you say no when you don't want to do something? <laughs> Or do you always feel like you need to say yes because you don't want to let them down or for whatever reason it is? Mm. Okay. Can you say no when you don't want to do something? Be honest with yourself, okay? Number eight, are you able to express anger and annoyance appropriately? Mm. Hmm. Be honest with yourself. Okay. We're not, I'm not going to ask you to tell us what your answers are. I just want you to be honest <laughs> with yourself. Okay. You can be like, I know I kicked the, I kicked the fuck out of that dog yesterday. You know, like, Hey, you know what? That's between you and the dog, but, but for real, that might be a sign of some shit going on, man. You know, like we need to kind of work on this. All right. Do you, are you able to express anger and annoyance appropriately? Number nine, do you offer an opinion on a topic when you don't agree. When someone's talking about something and you don't agree, do you offer your opinion on that topic or do you not? Be honest with yourself. Okay. Number 10, do you defend yourself against mistakes when they are not your fault. Okay, that was it. That was it. Number 10. Do you defend yourself against mistakes when it's not your fault? 
Okay. What do we think about that, everybody? The quiz is over. You can put your pencils down if you if you were taking notes. <laughs> okay. Is anybody in the room willing to say, hey, listen, I've got, I've, I've, yeah, I probably ought to work on some of this. Does anybody feel like that? Or would anybody be willing to admit that? That takes balls. It's just us. It's a private session. We're not on YouTube or nothing. Would anybody say, hey, you know, I kind of, yeah, I mean, I, I see there's a couple, two, three, four deficiencies there. I could, I could improve. All right. No one wants to confess. Everybody. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Good. See, I just want you to feel like you're not alone because I do too. I'll be, I told you right there, I confess to number three. I do real bad. Sometimes number six, I struggle with. I'll be real. Which was, do you feel comfortable around others? Number three was the uhs and the ums. <laughs> number seven, can you say no when you don't want to? Okay, I kind of fuck that up sometimes. <laughs> And I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I feel like I don't express my anger or my annoyances appropriately. Sometimes I let it build up a little bit, and then I hurt somebody's mm -hmm. feelings over the shit. Yeah. <laughs> that one. I'm with you on, on all those, Justin. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Right? We all got problems. Yeah. All right. So definitely work to do. <laughs> on you okay definitely work to do on you see not just the biz but we all know that if you're making phone calls how you are affects how you make the phone calls which affects the biz so th that's that's why we're doing this here so interesting does anybody have any thoughts or comments they'd like to talk about when it comes to those quiz questions anybody else got anything they want to I mean, if it was a passing grade, I pretty much failed. But how do we, how do we even, like, fix these things or yeah. put them in mind? Right, that's a good question, and and I want to spend some time talking about that, answering that question, starting right now. But then I also want to spend some more time with it on next week and the week after. And we'll work through some things, and and hopefully we can all improve ourselves because we all see how we 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 really could need improvement here you know um let's slip right into the next stage of this which is the assertive person's bill of rights okay this is an assertive human being's bill of rights so this is where you as a passive individual uh that failed the test if you're you know like like i did okay <laughs> I'm not, I'm not talking down to you. I'm talking over to you. Hey, we're in the same club. Okay. Uh, these are, these are bill of rights. Hey, it's good to see you, Larry from Illinois. Thanks for popping in here. Okay. Bill of right. Number one, you guys might want to write this down. I don't have anything. This is, it's, it's too much to write down. So bill of right. Number one. You have the right to judge your own behavior, thoughts, and emotions, and to take full responsibility for their consequences. You have the right, okay? Pretty simple, pretty simple. We all, we all mentally assent to that, meaning we acknowledge the truth or the fact in that but we don't really embrace the power of it okay you have the right to judge your own behavior and thoughts and emotions you are the judge other people's behavior may have an impact on you but it does not necessarily determine how you choose to react and or deal with that situation you have the right to judge your own thoughts and behavior and emotions okay all right, so Bill of Rights, number one, you have the right to judge, okay? Number two, Bill of Rights, number two, there's like 10 of these. 
you have the right to offer neither reason nor excuse to justify your behavior. Are you an adult? Yes, you are. You're not under someone else's custodianship or guardianship. Okay, <clears throat> then you have the right to offer neither reason nor excuse to justify your behavior. Let me let me play this out a little further for you guys. You have the right to offer neither reason nor excuse for why you're asking to rent for 36 months before you pay off that house. Okay. Honestly, let's think about it. You don't have to have an excuse. Okay. But this is bigger than that. This is all, this fits your whole life, but this, but that's, it can play out like that over the phone. <laughs> okay. So you have the right to offer neither excuse or reason to justify what you're doing. This is your choice. Okay. Your choice is your choice. You don't have to, you don't have to tell me why or get my approval. Okay. All right. Number three, bill of rights. Number one was, is you're the judge. Number two is it's your choice, right? You get to choose, nobody else. Okay, number three, you get to judge whether you're responsible for helping somebody else find a solution to their problem. Okay, did you catch that? Number three, you get to judge whether you're responsible for helping somebody else solve their problem. I want you to give yourself permission to do that right now. From now on, when somebody else has a problem, I want you to recognize right away that first and foremost, you're the judge of whether or not you feel responsible for helping them. Just because they have need does not mean you have to help. Just because they have a need and they are somewhat motivated does not mean you need to bend over backwards and chase them and beg and plead and okay see it can play out over the phone real easily here's the thing what happens when our actions cause other people to have problems are we responsible for helping them solve those problems the answer is no if ed causes me a problem Ed may feel regret about that. Ed may say, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for that to happen. But is it Ed's ultimate responsibility to cure my problem? No, it's my problem. Okay. So don't get manipulated into it, okay? Don't get manipulated into stuff. That's kind of what that's about. <clears throat> okay. Assertive right number four, you have the right to change your mind about anything. Hmm. Okay, hope you're learning something here about yourselves. Okay, we can improve here. Give yourself permission here. You can, you can change your mind. <laughs> you guys have heard me talk about this. Everybody needs room to turn around. Have you heard me say that? Everybody needs room to turn around. That's right. I used to drive a truck a little bit, you know, uh, and, and a bus. And, you know, you need room to turn around. I relate. You get somewhere down there, man, you wish people just let you, just give me some room. I just want to turn around. If you let me turn around, I'll get out of your way. You got to let people turn around, okay? But you also should give yourself the right to turn around. Whenever you need to, whenever you need to, you turn around, okay? Assertive right number five, you have the right to say, I don't know. Okay? Give yourself the right to not know everything. It'll set you free, okay? Assertive right number six, you have the right to make mistakes and to be responsible for them. Okay. I'll share this with you too. You have the right to be poor. 
You have the right to be broke and have no money. You also have the right to be rich, to have all of your needs taken care of. It's all up to you. You have the right to make mistakes and you have the right to be responsible for them. Okay. So to make a to make a mistake is part of being human. Other people try to try to manipulate you. And they try to make you think that your errors are unforgivable. And that you have to make amends for your mistakes by engaging in some kind of a, an appropriate behavior to a, to gain their approval again. And if you allow this, uh, your future behavior will be influenced by your past mistakes and your decisions will be controlled by the opinions of other people. Hit rewind on that shit. <laughs> okay. All right. Assertive right number seven. You have the right to be independent of the goodwill of others before coping with them. In other words, you have the right to be independent of anyone else's approval. Okay, you don't need anyone else to approve. You're independent of others' goodwill. You don't need their blessing. Okay. I want to say this too, a relationship doesn't require 100% uh, agreement between two parties. Okay. So while we're being independent of other people's approval and blessing, we also recognize that in order to have a relationship, we do need to have a certain amount of agreement between each other. Okay. There, it's inevitable that I'm going to hurt your feelings and you're going to be offended at times. Okay. But ultimately, I'm responsible for myself. And I will learn to deal with the periodic disapproval of other people. Okay. You want to hear that? Maybe rewind that again, too. You, you want to get to a place where you're okay with the disapproval of other people because it's just a it's just a thing that happens every now and then. Okay. All right. Let's let's do uh, number eight. You have the right to be illogical in your decisions. Okay. I don't think we need to talk about that too much. <laughs> but you do have the right to be illogical in your decisions. Number nine, you have the right to say, I don't understand. Number 10, you have the right to say, I don't care. Number nine and number 10, you have the right to say, I don't know, I don't understand, and I don't care. You have that right. You have that right. Okay, okay so that's the 10, the 10, um, Bill of Rights for Assertive Human Beings, okay? Mm -hmm.